Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Today we are starting a series for Code Chef Long Challenge. Now this is specifically the August Long Challenge, um, August 2019, I guess I should specify. Um, but this is going to be sort of a walkthrough. It's going to be a series, so this is part one. If you want to make sure to see the rest of the series and finish the Long Challenge itself, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing that over the next couple of weeks, so I want to make sure that you don't miss out. Um, I want to go through my process, how I do these coding problems, and hopefully it is helpful to you to learn a little bit about how it works, how I do it, and potentially get some of those tips. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Before I do, I should probably start with a disclaimer. Um, make sure you don't copy this line for line. If you do, you will get flagged by the algorithm for cheating, and obviously that is not the intention. So I will show all my code. I'll show it line by line. If you want to use the concepts, great, excellent, or want to just learn from the process, that's good too. Just make sure that you're not copying it line by line. Obviously, that would be a mistake. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, you can see my screen here. I've got Code Chef up. And the first thing that I'll do, go to the code challenge itself and find the first problem. I usually start by the successful submissions, see which ones are obviously the easiest. Start with those and work your way down through the list. With this one here, obviously, football is the easiest. So we'll go ahead and start with that. I jump over to the included IDE. It's pretty easy. If you want to use your own on your own computer, you're welcome to do that. But if you start with the practice section, now normally if you're in a long challenge, it would be the tag of that challenge. Here would be August 19B. But since that is a past problem, they, they throw everything back into practice. So we'll paste the code there. You find it. Once you hit select, it brings the problem statement into view. Now let's go ahead and get started. So if you don't want to waste time listening to me read and understand this intro statement, go ahead and skip maybe 30, 45 seconds and we'll get into the coding. But we'll start with going through some of the details and talk through the process of figuring that out. So it says, a football competition has just finished. The players have been given points for scoring goals and points for committing fouls. Doesn't sound important. Now it is up to Alex to find the best player in the tournament. As a programmer, your job is to help Alex by telling him the highest number of points achieved by some player. Okay, useful, but backstory isn't always that important. Um, given two sequences, A1 through N and B1 through N. Okay, so that's pretty valuable. For each valid I, player I scored AI goals and committed BI fouls. Okay. Uh, for each goal, the player that scored gets 20 points. For each foul, 10 points are deducted from the player that committed it. However, if the resulting number of points of some player is negative, this player will be considered to have zero points instead. So essentially, you've got two arrays, A for goals, B for fouls. You're adding 20 points for each goal, subtracting 10 for each foul, and no one can have a negative number. Fairly straightforward, we go through some of the test cases, and input, output, and constraints are going to be a little bit more valuable once we get into some of the more complex problems, but for now, essentially it's just telling us we got T test cases, N integers, and then the two arrays, and the test cases and the team levels are between 1 and 2 for subtask 1. They really wanted you to get those 30 points fairly easily, it sounds like. Um, and then original constraints, so up to 150 for the player number and 100 for the test cases. So first, and this is what I typically do first, I'll grab the example input and put it in as custom input. Okay. And that way when I feel like I'm ready or at least at a stopping point, I can run it, go through any compilation errors that I may have and, and continue going. So I'll talk through what my code looks like right now. I have a few include statements. That's not a big deal. Um, I've defined LL as a long long. I almost always use long long because it's pretty negligible on compilation as far as how long your program takes to run, but it makes things a lot easier when you don't have to worry about extra long integers ruining your algorithm. That will definitely bother you. Okay, so you can also see in my int main here I've got sync with standard input output false. It just makes the C in and C out a little bit faster. Um, long long tests, bringing in the tests and then while statement to run through each of those tests. Fairly self-explanatory, but that's on a lot of the code chef problems you have a certain amount of test cases, so I just have this as my default. You're welcome to use it if you want to. So while each test, you want to grab a couple more pieces of information. You've got this three, which is your n value, so the number of people on the team, and then one value for each of those team members in the A and the B arrays. So let's start with, let's see, our answer is going to be the max, so let's give ourselves that. We also want to pull in the end value. So let's grab that. And then we're going to need a couple arrays. So let's give ourselves those arrays. Um, A. And then B. 
Okay. Now those are initialized with zero, so obviously so they're blank. Um, let's go through a quick for loop to get the information into those. Hopefully this isn't too boring as I type through, but I'll try and talk as I go. So this for loop essentially is creating an integer i and starting at zero. As long as it's less than n, which is the number of people on the team, keep increasing and keep going through this for loop. And as we do that, we're obviously going to want a temp integer. We're going to want to save, bring in that integer, and then save it as, let's start with a. Yeah, so we'll save it to a value inside the a array. Big fan of copy paste, because I want to do the exact same thing for the b array. And then our scoring is also going to be that same way. So now I have a couple of options here. I could go through and create a new array that's going to keep all of my points and then determine the maximum of that array, which is an option. But if really you're only looking to get an integer at the end of the problem, all you want to have is that value. It's really not necessary. All you have to do is keep track of your maximum. And as long as your maximum is increasing or you're saving it, if it does increase, you, that's all you need to do. So let's set our max at the beginning to zero. That's the minimum value. If if we could have values that are negative, I would not want to set it at zero. I want to set it at something, probably the min integer value that C++ enables. But for now, since I know zero is the floor, that's the minimum you can get, I'll set it there. Okay, so let's start by doing some of the math. Let's create our total points for each player. Set that equal to zero. And then for each value in the player array, we're doing that right now, you want to say if, um, well, I think it was A, which is your goals, times 20 minus B, which is, I should be saying at I, I apologize. So A at I and B at I times 10 is less than zero. So essentially, if it's negative, I want to give it zero. So total points, equal to zero else so this means it's positive total points is going to equal this value so essentially the calculation that we just made so it's the goal scored which is the value at i of the array, a array times 20 minus the foul points which are 10 points for each inside b okay now the important thing is we have a value for total points we need to check it against our maximum so if total points is greater than the maximum then maximum is equal to total points. So then at the end of this for loop, we have a max, and that's gonna be the max across the entire team. And we will send that to the C out. Okay, now there's probably a few compilation errors. There usually are when I run it for the first time, but as soon as I finish my initial coding, I'm always gonna hit run. It just makes it easier, quicker and easy to see which compilation errors I may have. In this case, I don't have any. It's a fairly simple algorithm, so that makes sense. But let's check our answer, output 800, zero. Okay, as soon as I get the output correct and I've handled the edge cases that I can think of, I usually am gonna go ahead and submit. That's my personal preference. I know in this specific competition, you are not penalized for how many times you submit. So in general, I submit as soon as I think I'm ready. And if there's something wrong, I can go ahead and dive deeper into that problem and go ahead and fix it. But in this case, it seems fairly simple, so hopefully that works out for us. And if not, we can dive in and find out what went wrong. Okay, so it looks like we got the correct answer. Again, I want to mention that this is essentially for concepts, and we want to make sure that you guys are understanding how I go through each of these problems and what I'm learning as I go. So not all of the time am I going to get the right answer. I may even finish one while having to look it up, but for the most part, hopefully this is helpful. And this again is part one of the series. So if you wanna stick around and see the rest of the long challenge, don't forget to subscribe. And that will come out in the next couple weeks. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.